Now, I'm profusely elated to introduce our chief guest of the day, Dr. K. Girish, an ideal neurosurgeon. Here, I like to borrow words from Professor Dr. Sir Anton J. Surya. What he says is, Dr. Girish is, a, is unique in that he is a physician, neurophysician, and neurosurgeon, and at the same time, a consultant specialist in alternative medicine as well. Therefore, he is the model of the futuristic healer of integrated medicines. Dr. K. Girish is a man for all seasons indeed, a model healer of the third millennium. In my lifetime, having visited some 133 countries, I am yet to see a doctor who has such unique wide spectrum, qualification, charisma, humanitarianism, and clinical sense. Thus, he says, he has also authored about seven books and has conducted about 2,000 health camps in various villages. He has received about 86 awards from various organizations for his exemplary service to the poor and needy. Tamil Nadu MGR University conferred Best Doctor Award on him. On behalf of Reiki Center of India, I welcome him for delivering keynote address. Over to you, sir. Distinguished uh... Professor Dr. P. S. Leritha, the founder of the Ricky Center of India, the president of uh, the Ricky Center, Mrs. Amisa Freebevi, secretary, Mrs. Vasanti Karti, treasurer, Mrs. Saraswati Kalyan Sundra, as well as uh, the guest of honors, Mr. Rupuram Nadeshan, as well as all the great healers who have assembled here. It is, uh, uh, in fact, I must thank profusely Professor Dr. P. S. Lalita, the founder of Ricky Center of India, for having invited me to deliver the chief guest address for this 23rd World Ricky Day 2022. Ricky the shield for humanity. A wonderful theme topic, and I'm very, very thankful to you. Now, I'll begin my talk. I also thank the first doctor, Mrs. Bhuvaneshwari, for having introduced me in a very nice way. Good. And uh, I'll be talking on neuroacupuncture and pain relief. As well as, I'd like to throw some light on Ricky energy and healing, a scientific outlook. Now, neuroacupuncture and pain relief. Well, I had the qualification. Will I talk to you subsequently? So, this is what the first part of my talk will be on neuroacupuncture and pain relief. The second part will be on the Reiki healing, the energy healing, and some scientific outlook. Now, here is Professor Anton J. Surya. He is the Anton J. Surya, who we call all as the father of complementary medicines. In fact, I had my training in acupuncture when in Chennai, they had organized the voluntary health services has organized the 42nd International Acupuncture Course conducted by Beijing. They were here for six months, a Chinese trainer and a team of them. We were 15 doctors who were posted for that, including neurologists, anesthetists, gynecologists, and so on from different parts of Tamil Nadu. We underwent a training of nearly six months. That is a 42nd course conducted by the Beijing Center. And uh, I did come out with flying colors for that particular course. In the morning, we had the practicals. And in the afternoon, we used to have the theory. And finally, we had an examination. This was organized by the late Professor Krishnamurti Srinivasan and also the standard motors uh, managing director. And because this particular person, when we went to Beijing for a treatment for trigeminal neuralgia, she did find excellent relief. And that is why she wanted the same to be experienced by the people over here. So she brought in those people to train us. 
And that's how I got into the world of acupuncture soon after my DM neurology. And then I later on traveled to Japan to several places and in the process to Sri Lanka. And I had seen this great man, the Anton Jensubia. He is a father of complementary medicines. He's an MBBS doctor, but he started uh, himself training acupuncture, qualified in acupuncture, and also in homeopathy, and also in homeoacupuncture. And he used to conduct large uh, coaching, which in fact students from all over the world do come. And every year, every year I can tell you, there is a world conference of complementary medicines, which will be held in the month of December. I was the chief guest on two occasions for that. And when you are the chief guest, he has got a fleet of four Rolls Royce cars. And also he has got 25 fleet of pens. And he's got several hotels there. The person as a chief guest, which is one hour from, there from the airport to the Colombo proper, he receives us and drops us back in his Rolls Royce. So it is a prestige to travel with him. It will be a three or a four day conference in Bandar Naik in Memorial Hall. And I used to be the chief guest of many of them. And I used to see Professor Piers Lalita there. And she used to come with the team and participate in the scientific deliberations there. So it is a very wonderful meeting. We all learned a lot. We all learned not only really from presentation of papers, but hearing others presenting papers and a lot of interactions we had and evenings, which was full of fun and frolic. And he's a very, very jovial man. The very aspect I love, Anton J. Surya, is uh, you can be a speaker, be a humorous speaker. It's something very, very difficult. So he is a humorous speaker. And he, is there, he had a very powerful memory that even if you are in the last row, he will call you by your name. He addresses you by your name. And you really feel very proud when you are with him. And based on the qualifications of people, his university has in fact uh, given doctorate degrees and so on. And he has recognized the complementary medicine specialists all over the world. His students are practicing, I must tell you, in several parts of US, ah. several parts of Frankfurt and Germany. Ah, and there are parts, and you can see them. How, what you can say, they was in wow. practice. Some of them fly from one country to the other and are preparing complementary medicine. May I request the host to mute all the other participants? And that is this great personality, Anton J. Surya. This is at an earlier time when he visited Chennai. That means almost around 30 years ago, where you find here. Another stalwart, Professor Nanjal Manoharan, who was presiding that particular conference. This is myself, Dr. Girish, and this is the late Professor P. Narendra, the neurosurgeon. And he is the father of homeopathy here. So I always offer my tribute to this very great, wonderful man, the Lord Pandit Professor Anton J. Surya, a born teacher, a great leader, a cable administrator, very courageous, a leader with a voracious reader. I can tell you he had written more than around 50 or 60 books. And whenever he goes, for example, for the meeting when he came to Chennai, there is something which all of us have to learn. You know, he goes back to the room. I said, I'll come and uh, pick you up for dinner by 7. He was staying in touch, Kaunimara. I said, I'll come and pick you up for dinner in the night, 7 o'clock. So when I went to his room at 7, or rather what he can say, I went a little earlier by around 6.30. I contacted him. He said, you please come up. So I went to his room. When I opened the room, what I found was he was sitting and reading proof correction for his 45th book. See? And he, I asked him, can we go out and just go out to some places and come back? He said, no. I have traveled to more than 130 countries, but I will not go anywhere. I give the lecture and be back and I'll be doing my academic work. Such is the born, I can say he's a born academician. And he recognizes people who are highly academic from the audience per se. And he admires them. 
So he is a leader, voracious reader, excellent conversationalist, ever smiling, affectionate outlook. And his very optimistic, friendly approach. He loves the subject of alternative or complementary medicine. And uh, he is called as a beloved guru by all of us. And he's a confidence, a builder, personality builder, shaper for all the specialists of alternative medicine. All the specialists of alternative medicine. And, one, and prior to this, I'd like to tell one more thing about Anton J. Surya. I still remember in one of the World Congress of Alternative Medicine, he was inaugurating his new resort, which is one hour from Colombo proper which is uh, on the hills of Kittulgala. Now, Kittulgala is the, the one, one end of the movie was in fact, uh, the bridge over River Kwe was shot there. It is one end of the bridge which is burned actually. And this particular is on a slope. He built a beautiful resort called the Kittulgala Resort. Kittulgala is the main river that flows through the center of Colombo. And he built this resort so we all, you know, we went to the resort as a, in a casual manner after the conference. And we were all spread out there, about, about 500 to 600 people, 80% of them were foreigners. Suddenly he came out from, he came from his, he came out from his Rolls Royce. And I could see three ministers of Colombo standing there. He came out and there was a red ribbon from entry to the hotel. He just said, Dr. Girish, Please do come and inaugurate this hotel. I was taken aback. I was shocked to the core, and I considered it as a great blessing by this great man, the father of complementary medicine, to having called me to go and inaugurate this. Much to the shock and uh, you know amazement of the foreigners, because each one of them were weighing each other to do that. So I cut the each one, and then I got into. It. Then there was a one room where you find uh, his father. Whatever his father had used, he has kept it in that room. Even that room was inaugurated by a colleague of mine. And then, of course, it was, uh, you know, it was a beautiful resort where you find food distributed all over. And we all spent one full day over there and we were back in the night. It is a lovely resort which he built with certain pyramids and other things, again, shaping for complementary medicine. I would like to pay my great tributes to this great man. Line, line pundit, so Lord Pundit Professor Anton J. Surya. Dr. P.S. Lelita, Professor, Ricky Grandmaster, a very pious person. And I, seen, I have seen in all the complementary medicine conferences in Colombo, Madam was going to be very simple and a very humble, a very polite outlook, and comes and presents her scientific paper. And she's there for all the scientific sessions. She listens to all the papers and gains a lot of knowledge. Hats off to you, Professor. I have seen in her as a mother. I had seen in her as a great carer, a person who has got a lot of compassion, a person who has got an empathetic outlook, who understands the sufferings of the patients and then treats them. So these are something very, very rare qualities of hers. And I'm sure her healing hand has healed many a personality. There is no doubt about it. And not only that, she was the professor of anatomy and worked more than 30 years in the veterinary college. And subsequently, she's also a research or a highly research oriented personality and subsequently took to various diploma in magnetotherapy, hypnotherapy, sujok acupuncture, as well as acupuncture and Reiki healing and is a grand master. In fact, I have gone under her a treatment that is grade one uh, healing process, I have undergone her teaching. Now, next time, I'm waiting for the grade two, then for the distance healing, and discussed with the madam, and she said she will be doing it online. I'm very grateful to you, and my namaskarams to you, Professor Dr. P.S. Lalita. Such a great personality, you're there with us. Now, I'll talk to you all on neuroacupuncture and pain relief mm -hmm. in the first part of my talk. And the second part of my talk will be on Reiki healing, a scientific outlook. Now, the, some might be wonder why this neuro is being added. Why can't you put it as acupuncture and pain relief? I've been questioned even in the World Conference of Complementary Medicine too. 
when I use this word. However, certain aspects, there are very many aspects of acupuncture and its effects where we cannot explain, but some we can explain. And that is why I put it as neuro and I'll tell you why it is. I've been a physician, neurophysician and a neurosurgeon. That is after finishing my MBBS five years, I did my MD general medicine for two years, after which I did my doctorate in neurology for two years. Then I did my doctorate in neurosurgery five years and I became almost the first uh, in all of Asia to be and one among the two to be, the, to be the first neurophysician and neurosurgeon. And then I started traveling my journey into the realms of complementary medicine through the opening was given in voluntary health service. Subsequently, I took it in Hong Kong. I, was see, I, I did see it in Japan. And then, of course, in Colombo, where I had the full-fledged doctorate in medicine, in traditional medicine, doctorate in medicine for alternative medicine too. The current trends in acupuncture therapy, the definition, scientific basis, concepts, Western Chinese, spec studies, and the future prospects. Accuse means needle, punctura means puncture. It is there in Huangdi Niji, written 200 BC. Now, the, as far as Chinese is concerned, they have the traditional medicine going on in one direction. Almost parallel, you do find the modern allopathic system going on. But it is not running parallel. In fact, they mix together. If you find in a big hospital, you'll find the modern medicine there. At the same time, you'll find a wing of traditional medicine. So people, they decide they want to go there, they can go, they go to allopathy, they go. Allopathy also says if they finish some treatment, they feel these sort of things can be treated by the complementary, they send them over there. Complementary, in fact, what you can say, they feel that this has to be treated by allopathy, they go over there. So it is almost like hand in glove in China, they work. That is why they could upkeep in full swing at par allopathy, the traditional Chinese medicine. And the basic concepts of these are the yin and yang, the five elements, root, fire, earth, metal and water, zanfu organs, which all of our body organs are there, channels and collaterals, which are running over our body, the vital energy, the vital energy, this, this is the energy that is the base, forms the basis of, again, Reiki healing, as well as it forms the basis of acupuncture. The chi, it is called chi and it is called ki in Japanese. And you've got the acupuncture points. These are some of the basics. I won't be uh, going in detail on this. These are the channels and collaterals all over the body. There are 361 acupuncture points and about 12 channels and collaterals. Uh, an acupuncturist should master all the 361 acupuncture points as well as uh, all the channels and collaterals and their way of traveling in the body. You can see earlier, even in the cow, you have actually points where you prod the cow in certain areas, you find uh, movements do occur. This is again from the, one of the museums, you find elephants, you know, the maho, he prods the elephant in certain okay. acupuncture points. An elephant is able to move forward. The mechanism of action, there are several theories, just not only these three, the bone hand theory, the magnetic theory, the Japanese theory. And I did find it is basically based on the nervous system because with a needle, you're stimulating the nervous system. We have here the cutaneous visceral reflex. That means nerves are there on the body, you stimulate, it goes inside and stimulates your visceral organs. Visero motto, visero visceral, dermatobes and acupuncture points, the intersegmental reflexes and the long loop reflexes that are active. That is a stimulation in nating stomach 44 uh, near the index yes, finger, sir. near the big toe. Sir? If you still, if, yes? Sorry to interrupt, you can't see your slide. Uh... See, here you see a great man from Sir Anton J. Surya. You have, all, you have already heard it, what I'm talking, not repeating that. He's such a great man, a father of complementary medicine, whom I have undergone training to. And uh, several of the times when he conducted the World Congresses, we were there. Professor Alita was there. We all used to present papers, chair scientific sessions. And uh, I can tell you for the past maybe 
it is uh, he passed away very recently but prior to that almost nearly 20 25 years we used to go almost every year for the world complete world about the conference of complementary medicine this is an international conference which he has been doing and he is such a voracious teacher and all those things i have told you and uh, uh, professor lalita i told you is a reiki grandmaster and uh, she also has uh, qualifications in acupuncture and she took up to uh, the uh, healing as a great and i was telling that you know he was uh, he is an overall round personality with the care compassion empathy and uh, you know that is what is very essential and a very spiritual and pious all these are essential for you to invoke your powers on the chakras which you want to heal and uh, that is again extremely important so these qualities of professor ps lalita is something which we all at pan and i had undergone her and designed the training in acupuncture which i have gone all over the globe i also undergone a uh, reiki uh, uh, training maybe the grade 1 i am yet to take the training on grade 2 and 3 which uh, professor lalita has promised that she will be giving it and she also speaks more about a little of anatomy she correlates with the uh, scientific basis we correlate with the reiki healing now there are two parts i told you that i am going to talk the neuroacupuncture and pain relief as well as the reiki healing so this is the outlook definition scientific basis clinical aspects concepts western chinese spec studies future prospects and acute needle puncture or puncture want the nation written to hunt at bc and this is the famous book that was written from which all the acupuncture theories have formulated these are some of the basic concepts of the traditional chinese medicine yin and yang five elements earth metal and water zhang fu organs channels and collaterals chi the vital energy and the acupuncture points these are the meridians and you find around nearly 32 or 34 of them with 361 acupuncture points as a student of acupuncture one should master one should master all the acupuncture points as well as all the meridians and their flow over the body which is very very essential it has been found that even in animals you do have acupuncture points as noted here some of those points are being used by men to move to milk the cow and so on elephants the mahout prods with a stick on these acupuncture points and make the animals move and bring the animals under control the mechanics of action in human beings non neural magnetic theory japanese theory that's a neural acupuncture theory now i have found when you are stimulating the body anywhere in any of the acupuncture points you are actually touching upon the nerve and it is a nerve which conducts the impulses and that's what prompted me to give the name of neuro acupuncture theory but the classical the traditional acupuncturists do not agree with that however in the world complementary medicine professor anton jury anton jay surya said yes it, that that is a term that can be used and you have the organs that are in the cutaneous visceral reflex for example you touch or you prick or you can say one portion of any of the hand you or the chest you find automatically it's like a reflex arc a c it goes to the spinal cord and then ultimately it goes and stimulates a particular organ so visceral motor and visceral reflex dermal tones and acupuncture points intersegmental reflexes these are some things some of the reflexes which act upon when you stimulate the needle and the nerves with the acupuncture needle as you see here the sensories they are carried or against it through the dorsal horn and or against it they reach here from this and from this it goes on towards the center so you find from the sensory if you are stimulating what you can see with the needle here the sensations come over through the dorsal horn then cross over goes to the supraspinal centers and then you understand what exactly happens so this is the cutaneous uh, the cutaneous response cutaneous visceral reflexes the visceral cutaneous you find the inflammatory mediators are there they are stimulated again through visceral efferents it reaches through the dorsal horn and then the pain impulses they travel up towards the supraspinal centers and then you get what you get the fibers descending 
So this is what prompted me to put it as neuroacupuncture reflex. And here you see very well a human body, acupuncture points and the multi receptive field neurons, dorsal horn neurons are there. So if they come to the dorsal horn, whatever may be your stimulation anywhere, it reaches the dorsal horn, then it goes to the supraspinal center, and then the fibers, what you can say, descend down and goes, in fact, to the particular organs. This is, in fact, the cutaneo visero motor, cutaneo visero motor reflexes. So, this is how, what you can say, all the stimulations are acting. Goes to the brain, and then what you can say, it comes down. Very, very important. So, acupuncture points, and if you see the acupuncture points per se, there is one scientist who dissected the acupuncture points. So you have a point here called uh, Kukku and here L1. And if what you can say, you just what you can say, take that area, you find it is all peripheral nerves are coming there and ending in it. So they found that these acupuncture points are also a concentration of nerves. Endorphins. Now, to study the scientific aspects of acupuncture, they started noting many, many aspects of pain mechanism. Understood. So when you have a pain and when you, what you can say, do an acupuncture, you're sending in fibers. The fibers are going into the spinal cord. From there, it goes up to the parietal cortex. Then it descends down for the descending inhibition system, releases endorphins. Endorphins release the spinal cord. And the spinal cord, what you can say, you find the substance P is blocked. And therefore, you don't perceive the pain. This is the scientific basis of acupuncture and the pain and the descending inhibition system. And these endorphins gives a euphoric effect for the patient. Studies have shown, CSF analysis have been done, and they found the endorphins there. You can see here, this is the this is the pot, this is the midbrain. This is the whole brain you can see over here: corpus callosum, thalamus. And here is the midbrain, the pons, the medulla. And midbrain, the center of consciousness. This is the periaqueductal gray. And this is where you find endorphins are getting released to go down. You can see in this slide very well where the pain occurs. The pain stimulus is here. You find it enters into the dorsal horn, crosses, and it goes up as the pain pathway. And it goes through the midbrain. It reaches to the post-sensory cortex, to the parietal aspects, it gets consolidated, and then it descends down and stimulates the periaqueductal gray. This is a cross-section of the midbrain, and from the periaqueductal gray, you find endorphins gets descended down, and it blocks the substance P, which is a pain transmitter, and blocks the substance P from going up, actually. So, therefore, the patient does not perceive the pain. And this is the mechanism of action of neuroacupuncture for pain relief. Very, very important. So, when the pain stimulus, that's the nociceptors, are stimulated, it enters into the cord, and from there, what you can say, the fibers are transmitted, it goes up through the midbrain. That's the medulla, pons, midbrain, and it goes up to the post sensory gyrus, then consolidated in the parietal cortex. From there, it descends down to the periaqueductal gray, that is the midbrain, and from there, endorphins are released. These endorphins come over here and block the substance P, which, what you can see, is a neurotransmitter that is being released. Also, 5-hydroxytryptamine, etc., and it does not allow the substance P to act, and thereby, this again, what you can say, goes up. So, the substance P does not proceed up for you to perceive the pain. This is the descending inhibition system, and this is what is being studied in detail on endorphins and pain analgesia. This is the basic mechanism of how this acts. Then you have other neurotransmitters also have been seen, like hydroxytryptamine, endogenous APTs, uh, opiates, ACH, catecholamines, and naloxone has produced antagonistic effects for all this. So these are some of the scientific studies that have been done for pain relief by acupuncture, Han et al., 1986. Now, again, research to understand, it is a smaller diameter of excited fiber, the greater the analgesic, because the small diameter fibers are the ones which are being stimulated. 
and these small diameter fibers are the ones which carry the in the neurotransmitter substance P to be forwarded actually to the higher center which is being blocked. When you do electroacupuncture, you find by sixth day, you find there will be tolerance, so you'll have to increase the frequency. Now, acupuncture points, it has been studied uh, on various studies, that is in cadavers, they, they, they dissect and found out that these are all the endpoints of the various peripheral nerves, as well as multiple receptive fields are there. These were the acupuncture points. And using technique, there are different techniques, the needle technique, the art of manipulation, needling reaction, reinforcing and reducing. Maybe what you can say, take up and what you can say, insert up and down. These are the various positions where the needles are being placed at various angles. And one of one aspect about the needle, the needles, if you have, you have to autoclave the needles. I've seen certain people taking the needle from their pocket and using, please don't do that. Needles can infect, can produce hepatitis B. Now they're using disposable needles. But otherwise, please autoclave the needles. Very, very important. These are very sitting positions for various acupuncture points. Supine, abdominal, lateral. This is called the plum blossom needle. This is very good for post herpetic neuralgia, where you find in the root, you find the vesicles are appearing. And once after the healing, you get the post hepatic neuralgia lasts for months to years. At that time, you can actually strike it on the site of what you can say the, uh, the where the neuralgia occurs, the plum blossom needle. Now I'll show you some clinical aspects, especially I had concentrated more on painful situations, whereas the Chinese does, does it for almost all diseases. They have certain points, and they have certain calculations based upon the meridians, the energy flow, and so on. Now, I had concentrated mainly on the pain relief aspects of certain conditions which we follow in the neuro. This is a patient with a uh, headache. Now, when this patient came to you, any, any patient for that matter, when they come with headache, clearly examine, find out what is the cause, do if an essential a CT scan and what you can say rule out an organic cause and then try to treat the patient because you should not miss an organic lesion. Very, very important. And even it's a case of attention because many of the 80% of the headaches or either 60 to 70% of the headaches are due to the various tensions what the patients feel. And when a tension occurs, there are a lot of internal changes that occur and therefore the blood vessels can dilate or can constrict or it can say muscles can be under spasm of the head. All these are reasons for headache. So when headache, to diagnose headache itself is a headache for your information. That's the first statement written by a large book on, by Wolf. See? So therefore, analyze it very well and then go ahead actually and you can actually treat it. And these are some of the points that are being used. By way, this is a very important point that's on the vertex of the head. That's an extremely important point, by the way. It improves the blood circulation inside the brain. It has been actually studied, and I will also show you in the end what I have studied, what I have done. And here, these are the, uh, the toe way, and what you can say on the GB channels also, you have actually the points, the by the way, session kum, external point, ashi points are the tender points, toe way is the stomach A, shui gu is GB A on the lateral side, and you get another point called hukku. This is like a tonic point, this one. Most of the disease has been put. And the other point is nating. That's a stomach 44. That occurs actually between the big toe and the small toe. Now, one might wonder, see, local arts you can actually explain. How can you explain what you can say something which is very far away, even scientifically? It is like this. Now, when you have a spinal cord, the, uh, the arc goes the afferent, goes to the center, and efferent comes out. Now, there are long loop reflexes which are going up to what you can say the brain and coming back, influencing everything. So, these long loop reflexes will explain the effects of knitting. Knitting, stomach 44 can even relieve a toothache. That's a point in the leg, can even relieve a toothache. Now, scientists may laugh at that, but I can tell you, the scientists, now this gives an effect. When it gives an effect, you have to accept it. 
and it's up to the scientists to find out an explanation for that. That's very important. Just because you cannot explain something scientifically, it doesn't become unscientific. When you find that there is an effect, it's up to the scientists to find out an explanation for that. And that is where they studied all aspects of pain because they were trying to study the scientific aspects of neuroacupuncture. Again, for tension, headache, what you can say, these, all these people had very, very good relief of their headache, which they had been suffering for quite a long period. The other condition is trigeminal neuralgia. We have around 12 cranial nerves, of which the fifth one is the, the fifth nerve. It travels, what you can say, here and here, the ophthalmic, the maxillary, and the mandibular. And that, is the, when the, the nerve enters the brainstem, and that particular region, there can be a demyelination or a vessel crossing it. And that stimulates the nerve, and you get a very shocking, intractable pain in either what you can say, lower jaw, or in the middle, or what you can say, above. It is something very, very intractable. It has got to be explained. You can't even explain it. Undescribable pain. And for these patients, we have multiple treatments. That means there is no one definitive treatment. Either what you can say, we cut the nerve inside here or in the jaw, or what you can say, we go ahead and give an injection in the, uh, the gazarian ganglia, where all these nerves go, inject alcohol, or we give an absolute alcohol injection. And otherwise, what you can say, we put balloon into the gazarian ganglia, or we go behind, and then what you can say, open, operate, we lift the vessel and keep what you can say, a, a Teflon patch between the vessel and the nerve. So these are some of the treatments that have been tried, but uh, I have found in certain cases, acupuncture works very well. These are the points. This is the second uh, division. So we have put up the points for this in front of the trackers here and the GB channel, as well as uh, the Y-Way channels. You can see here the lateral view where the points are being put depending upon the course of the nerve fiber. This is the Hoku point, which is a tonic point actually for all points. So we had actually the Sibai, Nos Juliao, Dizang, Dain, Siaguan, Chuan Liao, Hubu, and Niti. Here also we have Niti stomach 44 channels being put. Trigeminal neuralgia, this is ophthalmic branch. We give the Ashi points. Ashi points are all tender points. Baihue is on the vertex of the skull, do 20. And then you have the Sibai, stomach 7, Chuan Liao, Hubu is here, tonic point, and Niti, the stomach 44 points. So again, here there are points in and around the eye. This is for the ophthalmic one. This, this one should not, what you can say, do it because sometimes you can go and injure the globe. Unless it's a very experienced practitioner only can do these points, which are on exactly on the, in the, beneath the globe, between the infraorbital margin and beneath the globe, it has to go. Then the other points, what you can say, can be given. Now, the other very, very important condition, which we find, so I've told you about headache, which is a very common thing for any of the pain clinics. The second, what you can say, pain, very rarely that comes with the trigeminal neuralgia. The third one is the cervical spondylosis. Now, cervical spondylosis is again very, very common as age advances. And these are some of the points where the pain radiates down. They are actually putting it. You can see on either side and the points are being put. And you can use electroacupuncture for this. The Ashi points are the tender points which we have used. Fung Chi, Dasve, Jiansen, Tianzun, and Huatu Jiaji. Huatu Jiaji are again, what you can say, tender points on the back. It doesn't specify to any one acupuncture points. So these are the points along the channel of the upper limb radiation, what we have put. This is again for frozen shoulder, especially for a person with uh, hemiplegia. And if they don't exercise properly, they will develop a frozen shoulder. Pain in the shoulder, they don't do exercise. Again, pain increases, like a vicious cycle it goes. If you want to break it, you can actually utilize this. The, these are the byway points put on either side of the vertex, and then the Gwatu Jiadi points, and then there are certain other points are also being put. So, one of the most important points is Tiapo, that is stomach 38, which comes in the leg. And when that particular, that's a larger needle, when you put in that and stimulate that, uh, almost 80 to 90 percent of them will get relief of the shoulder joint or the shoulder joint pain. That is called the Tiapo, 
or the stomach 38 point, a very, very important point. Then, of course, you have got the byway points, then the Jianyu, that is in the Atlantic Strand Channel, then, of course, Tungchi, Tokpu, and Yangli Chuan, that's the GB34. The other common condition of pain which we usually see is the low back pain. So these are the commonest painful conditions. Any OP, you will find either they have a neck pain or they have a headache or they have a back pain or they have a knee pain. This constitutes around 60% of any outpatient clinic. Now for the low back pain, it can be due to the disc that you got L4, L5, two bones. In between there is a cushion that comes up outside and compresses the root. That is L4, L5 disc, L5, S1 disc. L4, L5 will compress the L5 root. L5, S1 will compress the S1 root. So you will have that channel in that particular root you can actually stimulate. And in any case of low back pain, unless the disc is very massive, unless the patient has intractable pain, unless the patient cannot do any work because of the unbearable pain, unless the patient has a weakness, other than that, do not go and do surgery. Kindly do conservative management. In the conservative management, there can be absolute bed rest. You can also give acupuncture. Yes, electroacupuncture can be given for these people. Also, you can actually give laser therapy, IFT, shortwave therapy. In fact, IFT also works on the basis of acupuncture. Patients do have very, very good relief. Even taking analgesics, one has got to be very careful because analgesics are poisons. For analgesics, if taken in the long run, can produce gas practice. Some people, even with one dose of analgesic, can develop kidney failure. So this sort of treatment with acupuncture and combined mainly with Ricky will give this a boom to these particular patients who develop chronic low back pain. You can see here, these are the local pains, you know, pain in the low back, confined to the back, then it goes down through the base zone. You find what you can say, the S1 is traveling like this, S1. So you have here the Huangtio, Huangtio GRG points, Arshi points, Shen Shu, De Chang Shu, Xiao Chang Shu. These are all big, the Shen Shu, De Chang Shu, Xiao Chang Shu. These are all, this is for contained disc that you can use in the low back alone, contained disc you call it. That is, the disc is like this, it is not ruptured. It is just bulging. That's called the contained disc. The pain will be confined only to the back. For them, what you can say, this you can actually give. This will only be in the muscle. You can do electroacupuncture for this. And CDAO. So that is CDAO, then Beizum, Cheng Shan, Fei Yan. That is in the root of the S1. S1. That channel goes along to the root of the S1. You can see here, a pain traveling through, then the S1 root is going. Beizum, Fei Yan, what you can say, you see like this. And Tunlun. See, it goes like this. So this is L5 S1. The radiation of pain will be exactly like this on the S1 route. So you can actually stimulate and the pain impulses, you can say, go over there into the center of the cord and from there it ascends up to the parietal cortex and then what you can say, the, the emotional process takes place. Then you find descent down and endorphins stimulates on the periaqueductal gray. It comes over here, blocks the onward release of substance P and thereby you get relief of pain. And this should be for about 10 to 15 minutes. Patient will be lying fully relaxed in a very silent environment. All those things matters a lot. Patient should not be under tension. That's the S1 root I have already told you. The L5 S1 root. So all the, the points along the S1 root I have already told you. And sometimes you can have tender points. If there is, that's called the Ashi points, can be put. The other one is a moxibustion using moxa leaves. Now, these are patients with rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. You find rheumatoid arthritis, it waxes and wanes. Suddenly it comes, then it goes. After some time, you don't find the pain at all. But you keep on taking analgesics, hydrochloric chloroquine. All of them have got complications. Now, if you can use this 
a round protein can say the joint, the points, including this is one, lean, lean, one, young, lean, one, all these points if you can use. And you can use moxa wood in the leaf and you can burn it and the smoke will permeate the joint. You will find very good relief actually. Excellent relief. This is an excellent point actually for rheumatoid arthritis. Excellent point. It is a boon for rheumatoid arthritis patients who are on analgesics for a long time and they have developed complications of their analgesics. If they don't respond to the analgesics, they give steroids. Steroids can suppress the immune system, can produce further complications. Otherwise, they give hydroxychloroquine. The hydroxychloroquine can produce cardiac conduction defects in the long run, pigmentations on the face and back, and those are the things that can produce. Then there are a lot of biological modifiers which they give. And all those biological modifiers have their own complications. So try to use these complementary methods and try to get pain relief for the person especially rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoarthritis, of course, they have advanced in earlier stages. Again, you can do this. Besides, they must be made to walk and strengthening of the muscles are very, very essential, which many of them do not do it. And this again, you know, the charm shows, your charm show, you can say contained disc. This is, the, this is the contained disc. They will only have a pain on the case in this particular back. Contained disc. Yeah, contain this. This is a very common complaint of many people. And in all of them, you know, ladies, they work, they carry what you can say, the pail of water, they do so many things. And they find that between the two bones, the disc is there, it will just bulged. It is not pressing on any root. It only is pressing on, you can say, behind, and that stimulates certain nerves, and you get a pain that is located only to the back. This is Huato GRG points. People who have got diffuse low back pain. This is again a very, very common thing. Any one of us who are sitting like this for one hour without even a back support, I can tell you the next day morning you'll get up with a severe back pain or you can say the whole back and you won't know what is the cause for that. I still remember years ago when I was on a, in acupuncture, sorry, in a microneurosurgery lab, I was sitting in Japan and I was under the microscope with a frog. You know, I was dissecting the frog under the microscope. I was in that position for almost eight hours. And after the eight hours only, I relaxed. And then I went back home. I slept. The next day morning, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't get up from the bed. I didn't know what was the answer. Ultimately, I uh, traced and found out that this could be the effect. This was told to be by the orthopedician there. I went and saw him. He said, what did you do yesterday? I said, I was sitting like this for how many hours? Eight hours. I said, your backs have become stiff. Then he sent me, in fact, to uh, acupressure. That's a massage like was given and to a physiotherapist. And he put actually one needle there. And I can tell you after the third day, I had complete relaxation without any medication. So that's very important. Again, rheumatoid arthritis. This is the other way of giving the uh, the, the moxa wool, you can put into this, the heat is getting transmitted to the joint. A very soothing effect, you get a medicated leaf. Again, for osteoarthritis also, this can be tried like this. You can put the points around the joint and this is stomach, Suzanne leaf, a stomach 36. This is again a very, very important point, it's like a tonic point. Kuku is a tonic point. Similarly, stomach 36 is a tonic point. <coughs> That's it. Now, uh, Professor T.S. Kanaka, she is no more. She was one of the pioneers in pain relief. Uh, a lot of studies we have done together. And she had, in fact, a scale for pain, grade 1, 2, and 3. Based on this, we analyzed some of the cases. And the cases which I have done, I found lumbago, complete relief was there 20, partial relief 50%, failure was there in 20%, tension headache out of 100, 90% was a complete relief. 10% was a partial relief. And I found a trigeminal neuralgia, migraine, 50, 20, 50% 50 partial relief for trigeminal neuralgia. Then uh, cervical spondylosis, I did find 60% complete relief for cervical spondylosis because again, the pain waxes and veins. Rheumatoid, I found again 60% relief complete. Osteoarthritis, 60% complete relief. 10% was a failure. 
So that exactly is the uh, the one statistics which I have found over my orthopedic period of orthopedic study with acupuncture when I was doing it very very actively. And this is one person I did a back study here in uh, the Chennai. Uh, I just wanted to know the effect of by way. That is, you put four points on the vertex of the skull on either side. You know, I just want to know whether there are any changes in the brain that take place. And uh, you can see here, I'm putting what you can say the by way points, and he's sitting on the machine, and you know he's going under underneath the machine, and I'm putting in electroacupuncture stimulation is going on. This is the electroacupuncture connected to his by way, and the stimulation is going on. And you can see here, stimulation is going on. And the pictures are being taken. There are some areas which are getting lit. You see, blood flow is increasing in certain parts of the brain. As you can see, the more it is litting up, you can see areas are getting new areas are getting lit up. And areas did get what you can say lit up in several locations which are not seen earlier. So this is only one patient, you know. And I just wanted to know the effect of battery. And I did find that good stimulating here improves the blood circulation and this is again will become a very important point for stroke patients by the way with electrical stimulation the future prospects they are adjunct to other forms of theory useful research tool it's part of a therapeutic report of a pain as far as a western uh, system is concerned but for the chinese acupuncture is used for very many diseases it is in uh, ayurveda it is called suji veda based on the pancha mahabuda tridosha theory nadis prana the life is the energy the force energy and ayurvedic acupuncture is called suji veda science of healing suji chikitsa is there for them so that also the basis forms this but different terminologies are being used by them now i go briefly through though i am not an authority on breathing healing I have undergone under the famous professor Lalita Pierce, uh, the grade one. I'm yet to go grade two and grade three, with available knowledge and a little of uh, reference into the scientific literature to find out the effect of the Reiki. I'll just go through few slides. Works holistically on the whole body, mind, and spirit. Ray, the universal key, the energy, natural healing vibrations transmitted through the hands of a Reiki practitioner. palm to the clients also called palm healing or the hands on healing about 40 lakh people throughout the world have at least one level of reiki training more than 800 hospitals in us offer reiki treatment for surgery for patients very important prior to surgery we have here also a neurosurgeon who does that they do reiki healing prior to the surgery for the patient and for a reiki session it is 100 us dollars so that comes to around 7000 rupees <laughs> that is in us tim neuroman 2021 now the reiki healing of course there is a lot of energy i'll be coming to that because both in acupuncture as well as in reiki there are common aspects is about the energy that is surrounding us now prior to that i would like to tell that if it affect the treatment if it affect the reiki treatment on the autonomic nervous system they found those receiving reiki treatment lowered the level of heart rate respiration and the blood pressure this is again study done by the press by chart hospital now you look at this uh, system the brain the sympathetic the parasympathetic this is something like the yin and yang you know the autonomic nervous system is a system which works involuntarily you know and it is being controlled by the brain a center called the hypothalamus now sympathetic what you see on this side is for flight fright and all that many chemicals get released parasympathetic is rest and relaxation so it's like the yin and yang you know it has to be balanced very well that when the imbalance occurs you get all sorts of problems and when there are certain situations arises imbalances do occur see for example any form of stress you find what you get a certain changes occur the sympathetic and the parasympathetic if sympathetic dilates the pupil parasympathetic will be constricting the pupil 
See, that's very important. It's an opposite action for both. Sympathetic inhibits systemic mobility and secretions, stimulates systemic mobility and secretions by parasympathetic. Sympathetic contracts the bladder, the, the parasympathetic relaxes the bladder. So similarly, sympathetic accelerates the heart, parasympathetic inhibits the heart. So that's exactly the opposite effects of these two. When there's a flight or a fright, you find that people get dilated, heart rate gets increased, BP gets increased, and you start running. You understood? The bladder gets contracted, you run to the bathroom to pass urine, so many aspects actually occur. That is without your knowledge. Without your knowledge, it is worth it. So this sympathetic and parasympathetic is controlled by your human brain and the hypothalamus. It has got a thoracolumbar outflow. See, this is called a thoracolumbar outflow. Long chain is seen. Through this, they go up and down and connect to all the organs. And parasympathetic is a cranial and the sacral outflow. And that has got, again, what it gets a connecting. Sympathetic has got two chemicals, acetylcholine and noradrenergic, whereas parasympathetic is purely cholinergic, pre and post ganglion. So these are the neurotransmitters that have been stimulated. Now it is this which we are trying to play with both in acupuncture as well as in, uh, in Reiki healing too. That is to calm the both. Calming, what you can say, phenomenon occurs and you find the yin and yang that gets settled. Dr. Mehmet Oz, heart and transplant surgeon, invited Reiki practitioner to treat patients during open heart surgeries and heart transplant operations. Very important. Some of the scientific studies that have been done, I'm showing. American Hospital Association, 2008, 84% of hospitals indicated patients demand as the primary rational and offering complementary medicine, including Reiki. And 67% of those surveyed stated clinical effectiveness as their top reason. So Reiki does work. Ailments that tested favorably to Reiki treatment submitted to peer journal for review. Post-operative pain for tooth extraction. Cognition in elderly related to dementia, preoperative relaxation, postoperative pain, pain in chronically ill patients, depression and stress. With respect to safety, there have been no reported negative effects of Reiki in any of the research studies. Lee et al. 2008. So that means there are no side effects for Reiki. Very important. Before and after Reiki, three months after anemia and three months after anemia improved, changes in hemoglobin values. High blood pressure returned to normal, low BP returned to normal. A study of 40 people can control group. Wensley Wetzel, University of Morris, New York State, 1993. Study by Janet Quinn, University of South Carolina, 30 heart patients. The therapeutic touch, 17% dropped in anxiety levels after only five minutes of treatment. No change in control group. Rand WL 1998, Reiki, the healing touch. First and second degree manual, South Field, Vision Publications. Reiki healing reduces blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature. Morris J. Reiki hands that heal, ends in a book he has written. Reiki accelerates the recovery from surgery, improves mental attitude, and reduces negative effects of the medication and other, and other what you can say, medical procedures. This is the other study that have been done. The use of Reiki is growing more popular in the mainstream medical practice and has been shown to significantly decrease anxiety as measured by its effect on systolic blood pressure and also the salivary IG, Wardell, 2001. It has also been shown to be effective in managing pain, Olson, 1997, and in treating drug addictions, H. Master, 2000. Cancer Prevention and Control by Olson and team. Reiki has been very successful when used for patients with chronic illness, chronic pain, musculoskeletal injury, headache, acute infections, trauma, heart attacks, respiratory problems, allergic reactions, and asthma. Rand WL, Reiki, the healing touch, first and second degree manual, vision, publications. Studies have also shown Reiki to be effective in the management of pain, drug addiction, post-stroke rehabilitation, and post-traumatic stress disorders, among others. Again, by Olson and team. One, one study investigated what happens to Reiki practitioners and receivers during the practice. They found that brain waves of the practitioner and receiver become synchronized in the alpha state. And these waves pulses in unison with Earth's magnetic field. 
the Schumann resonance Becker and Zimmerman has noticed this. And they also investigated the biomagnetic field that is emitted from the hands of energy practitioners as they perform healing. They both discovered that pulses coming from the hands of practitioners are in the same frequencies as the brain waves and the range from 3 to 3, 330 hertz, focusing in the 7 to 8 hertz alpha state. Many physiotherapy equipment devices use electromagnetic frequencies in this range to promote bone and ligament healing. This is all studies done by Becker, Robert, and others. Now, this is very important. In our body, an energy is being transmitted for all of us. We sometimes see gods with halos around. Every human being has got a halo around his whole system. See, that's very important. And this is, has been photographed by Trillian, a Russian scientist. And that's a Kirlian photography. And there are various equipment that are being used for that. And here we can see before healing and after Reiki healing. This is after Reiki healing. You find the energy wave is in fact uniform. Whereas here it is not uniform before healing. This is one of the effects of Reiki healing. So this is a bio field that surrounds everyone. This biological Reiki postulates existence of a universal energy which is unknown. Is this energy being focused and coming into you? And we are actually exchanging this energy with the universe. And that is called as a life force energy, which is being depicted as the chi and the key in Japanese chi in the Chinese. And that energy is surrounding us in the form of layers. It may be seven layers. And that forms the seven chakras, maybe in fact floating in those beautiful layers. The signs thus far surrounding the human body, which practitioners can learn to manipulate using their hands, the Reiki diffusion through therapeutic touch. As quoted by Dunning Bryan, what, we'll, what I'll be looking for here with one's own auric field is an area of intense heat, some feel it, coldness a tingling sensation into that area where it needs is the Reiki energy and balancing one's chi. Very important. Zhang, 1995, calls this the biology, biofield, biology, field, electromagnetic body, a complex field of veins that forms the energetic and anatomical structures, including the chakra and acupuncture melody. It emanates from the body, which hypothetically regulates the biochemistry and the physiology of the body. As per Welsh and Smith, the components of the biofield are the electromagnetic fields contributed by each individual oscillations and electrically charged, moving particles or ensembles of particles of organisms, ion molecules of the cell tissues. The resulting biofield may be conceived as a very complex dynamic standing wave. It has a broad spectrum bandwidth being composed. Maybe the grandmasters of Reiki through their powers can in fact see those halos of the human beings. Higher orders like consciousness can alter the biofield. The positive stimuli from these domains can promote the greater balance. Now you can see the biofields. Uneven distribution, human emanations. These, these are the biofields. This is a human being and you can see the human emanations. For a patient who is sick, you find it is irregular, different shapes. For a healthy person, it is like this, with the seven layers looking out. For a sick person, you find an uneven distribution occurs. It is this halo which is being rectified. And it is in this halo lies all the chakras, as well as, you know, the seven layers of healing. The healing layer, the layers can go up to even one meter. See? This is the one. This is the normal. This is the abnormal, and this also is the abnormal. So these all have been photographed. The fact remains that such subtle signals emitted from various organs carry information throughout the human body central to life. This is before healing. You find it is irregular. And after healing, you find the aura. Or you can say is almost regular. Digital electrophotography, bioelectrography or digital brilliant photography can visualize 
part of the human biofield. This was a study done even in our Institute of Neurology. You know, people who had tension, people who are normal, and others how, but they could not standardize actually. Uh, but the study was going, but halfway to stop. However, I would like to pursue on this. Aura is a part of the electromagnetic spectra that surrounds us. It is an extension of your being. Aura is bioelectric magnetic field. Aura is related to the chakras have seven layers. And they might be murky, dull, dull colors, impending illness, shining colors, which I've shown you earlier, healthy. Then in pranic healing, Rika, the Reiki is aura health maintained. Now, this pineal gland that is related to the one, the, the chakra, and that's what called the uh, crown chakra, Sahasrara chakra. You find the pineal gland earlier. You find it is this pineal gland which is located here. That is, this one is a pineal gland. This is the human brain, and this is the brain stem. And you see here up in the posterior corpus callosum down is a pineal gland. This is the magnified view. Now, this pineal gland with the suprachiasmatic nucleus, it rays the sun rays, you see? And then the pineal gland, what again, through hypothalamus, it goes to the pi pineal gland. And then the rays are cut off, you find suprachiasmatic nucleus becomes act with stimulated, and it stimulates the pineal gland to produce melatonin. And then the melatonin induces us to sleep. This is what one of the cycles, you know? So that is how this pineal gland. Uh, as being in the crown chakra, you find the cosmic rays and the rays from the sun, etc., are stimulating the pineal gland. That is how pineal gland or pineal gland has assumed a lot of significance earlier. The pineal gland takes environmental information and converts it into chemical and electrical signals within our bodies. It is the energy transducer that sends information and electrical messages throughout the body and influences our rhythm. The chakras may well be the energy transducers for subtle energy that surrounds us. Therefore, the various forms of energy, such as light, sound, electromagnetism, and the putative energy behind the effects of Reiki healing or Reiki healing are translated into electrical and chemical signals within our body. These are the various chakras, and you can see the crown chakra, which is white in color, and it is related to the human brain as such. That is in the vertex, which of course receives all the cosmic rays, the pineal, and then you find the forehead chakra, the atna chakra, and it's related, in fact, to the uh, pituitary gland. And this is one of the most, it's like a peanut, but it simulates all the hormones and all organs are, in fact, acting under its control. And then you find the agna chakra, that is the throat chakra. The throat chakra has got the thyroid, the parathyroid. Again, acting wonderfully well for the whole body. Plus, it has got the most important called the windpipe, oxygen. You are maintained by the oxygen from the air. So, it assumes significance. The good and the bad air goes through this, as well as your food, stomach, esophagus. So, these are the important things of the throat chakra, when scientifically speaking. And then comes the anahata chakra, that is the heart chakra. As you all know, how important is the heart and how important are the lungs for your breathing and processing. And whole oxygen goes all over your body is because of the anatha chakra. And then you got the solar plexus chakra for your digestion, your liver. All those aspects are coming under the solar plexus chakra. Then comes the sacral chakra. And not against the intestines and the lower down, your reproductive organs, all things come under the sacral chakra of the swapishtana and the muladhara chakra. That, of course, is the base end of the spine and supposed to be the most important chakra, the root chakra. Where you find actually the, the real Shakti called the Kundalini Shakti is there, which uh, a Riki healing prayer can pray each chakra, in the, in the strengthen the chakra before you render the treatment. And you will render the treatment based upon where the ailment is and derive from the chakra. Scientifically speaking, each one of those chakras represent a very important anatomical organ. So diseases pertaining to that anatomical organ, which is very well delineated in the book by Professor P. S. Nalita, will definitely help actually uh, an additional tool to relieve the diseases per se of the ailment. And this is very well seen, as I have already told you. 
the heart chakra, in fact, has got a thymus also. Thymus get atrophied by adult, but thymus is the sole thing which enhances your immune system. Again, I will tell you about that. Furthermore, there is a perverted energy surrounding the body, referred to as the subtle energy. That's what you see here. A subtle energy is surrounding us, goes up to almost one meter. Subtle energy, both in forms and transcends the faculties of the five senses. It is taken into the body via openings all the chakras and translated into a form of energy that the body can use, literally used at the cellular level, just as the pineal is the energy transducer for environmental information. The chakras are the energy transducers for subtle energy. Subtle energy is a healing energy that anyone can learn to perceive and utilize. It is a crucial but often missing component in healthcare. Reiki benefits can develop a positive outlook change your negative behavior pattern, guides your life in a way that is exactly for you, provides positive personal energy to change the circumstances around you, creates lasting change and moves us along on a spiritual path of growth to discover our true nature. Reiki able to surround your life and everything you do with a wonderful glowing radiant energy that smooths away, making things easier than you thought it could be. Ran 1998. Reiki can release stress Individual becomes more susceptible to physical illness when exposed to a stressful stimulus. When you are stimulated to stress, your hypothalamus, cortical releasing hormones, ACTH is stimulated, goes into adrenal gland, release cortisol, which can produce a lot of harm to the body. You can see here cortisol weakens immune system, enhances heart disease, enhances blood pressure, high blood sugar, digestive system, system which gets affected. You can get anxiety, depression, headache. These are all the effects of stress that produces for you. And Reiki, in fact, neutralizes all this by calming effect your body. By using the particular chakras, you can, in fact, calm the body very well. And all these gets harmonized and balanced. Mind and body are extremely connected to the subtle energy. Various forms of energy, like light, sound, electromagnetism, Translate into the chemical and electric signals that orchestrate our physical health. And the experiment provided the first scientific evidence that our thoughts actually alter our immune system. Very important. Emotional stress indisputably and negatively impacts our physical health. Reiki healing can activate that healing system. Body is relaxed enough to make mind and the mind to enter a state of equanimity with the release of hormones associated with deep relaxation which benefits physical and emotional health. Specific hormones like endogenous benzodiazepines, anandamide, melatonin, n and dimethyltryptamine, and many chemicals get released, which counter the various effects of stress. Reiki enhances the psychoimmunological function. This is a very, very important component. As you are calming the person, and as you are treating the person with your hands, and the various energies that are being transmitted, you will also find the immunological system turns into a good balance, strengthens the immune system. It is very, very important. You know, when you have any foreign body inside, the immune system considers that as foreign and tries to produce some antibodies to kill it. There is a big question that is being answered. Why then the human tumor, the cancer, which is a foreign body, when it what is there in your body, why is not the immune system killing it? If that can happen, then you don't require any treatment for cancer. That is the answer that people are trying to search for it now. A cancer inside the brain, you find the immune system has to be activated. It has to kill. But the cancer evades, it hides from the immune system. There are one or two substances which are there, which hides the cancer from the immune system. And now one or two substances, they have found that. Two scientists have found which are the substances which prevent or hide the cancer from the immune system. If those two can be removed, the immune system can kill the cancer. And for that, James P. Allison and Tasuku Honjo, they have received the Nobel Prize in Physiology of Medicine for their discovery of cancer therapy by inhibition of the negative immune regulation. Very important. See, they have found out two substances which they have found. Each one has found a different substance on the top of cancer, which if it can be removed, then the immune system 
will kill the cancer. And for that, these two people have received Nobel Prize. So you must understand that Reiki enhances the immune system. And if you have got a good immune system, you can prevent almost 90% of your illnesses. Very, very important. Whatever it may be, bronchial asthma, you can create rheumatoid arthritis, all autoimmune diseases, which where the immune system goes haywire. So the immune system can be strengthened both by acupuncture and by Reiki healing. So this is a very, very important message which I'd like to convey to you all. Morris has developed a good set of professional ethics for the Reiki practitioners. Never diagnose or prescribe unless you are licensed to do so. Never go beyond the limits of what you are trying to do. Always get trained by a grand master like Professor Lalita. Never touch anyone inappropriately. Never take advantage of the bond that devils between you and the person. Respect the confidentiality of information given to you by your Reiki client. Be honest and accurate in the way you present yourself to the public. Common sense should always be used when doing Reiki. Reiki is simple. Keep it that way. Don't let your ego make you think you are doing the healing. Reiki does the healing. Very, very important. Simple, humble, polite outlook with compassion, care, compassion and empathy. These are the things that follow an Reiki practitioner. The following is of absolute importance. However, you should never make a diagnosis or make use of the word. You should not undertake any kind of action that goes beneath the surface of the skin. And of course, you should not prescribe any kind of medication or advise your patient to discontinue taking any. This is also one of the components pointed out by Be Beginsky and Sharon, 1985. And I think the last slides come. A spokesperson from Columbia Integrative Medicine at the New York Presbyterian Hospital perhaps expresses its best by saying, I find the practice of Reiki very rewarding as a practitioner. Patients have reported deep relaxation and a sense of profound healing after one session. I feel that Reiki is a huge asset for any hospital setting because patients sense that they are in a truly caring environment. The last slide. Reiki is indeed, in the terms of Dr. P.S. Raika, Reiki is indeed a worthy, effective method for facilitating the healing process, one that can contribute to the betterment of patients everywhere and to the betterment of our health care systems. And you can see, so you can see the beautiful healing tendencies of all the chakras which are being healed by our great grandmaster, Professor Dr. P.S. Lalitha. Well, that's indeed, ladies and gentlemen, on neuroacupuncture and pain relief and Reiki energy healing, the scientific outlook. And once before concluding, I would like to thank and pay my pronouns to Pranam, 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 Pranam to line, sorry, Dr. Great, the great grandmaster of Reiki healing, Dr. Professor Lalita Pierce. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your in-depth knowledge and experience in alternative medicine, sir. It is indeed, it is indeed very motivating and promising to see uh, specialist allopathy doctors like you recommend and practice alternative medicine. In fact, I got motivation to learn Reiki when I heard an allopathy doctor like you speak on Reiki. So thank you so much for that wonderful speech. Uh, now I request you to launch Healing Hands magazine virtually. Uh, okay. How do you do that? Uh, uh, I think that that's it. They will just show the screen. Okay, that's it. It's already launched. Uh, it's, my, it's my unique pleasure, uh, in fact, to launch this lovely booklet on the healing hands, the year January 22. It's my unique pleasure. I, in fact, hand it over to uh, Professor P.S. Lalita. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, indeed, we are very honored. Thank you so much. Now, uh, we would like to Thank honor... Uh, uh, one minute. Thank you, Dr. Girish, for elaborate talk on your system and Thank also you. combining with the Reiki. Thank you for... Um, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, ...accepting our invitation and honoring us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we would like to honor you with a trophy virtually, sir, as a mark of respect and gratitude 
for being a support and honoring us uh, with your presence in this occasion. Thank you very much. Thanks to our applicants. I am receiving this with great honor on the World Reiki Day from the hands of uh, Professor P.S. Kalita. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doctor.